Good evening, teacher. How are you? Hi. How are you? Are you okay today? Excuse me? Are you okay today? I was okay yesterday. The only thing is that I didn't have electricity. Yes, I knew. I, I understood mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah, there was a storm here that, my goodness. And yes, it, is start, it is started raining at about 7.15 and at 7.18, no electricity. I was already uh, sitting here in front of the computer when I was like, what? And we ran out of, imagine the electricity came I don't know what time in the middle of the night. Yes. It's, we were already sleeping because I just saw my daughter waking up still with the phone <laughs> to light herself because there was no electricity. I don't know what time it came, but we were all night without electricity. Yes. And tonight, now it's raining. It's raining very hard. Yeah. Well, but at they, least today uh, it's not as windy as it was yesterday because the problem yesterday, a part of the electric storm, it was the wind. It was yes. very windy. But the Ministerio de Medio Ambiente, they sent today for the whole community mm -hmm. uh, that the winds will be on 50 and 60. Kilometers? Uh -huh, kilometers per oh, hour. Velocity, yes. Wow. The storm came from Oriente del País, so it's going. Yeah, what I can see is that Santa Ana is raining. Santa Ana, San Salvador. I don't know what country, what country, what city is this one? I see only Quintla. I don't know what it is. Uh -huh. But what I can see is San Salvador is raining hard. And Santa Ana. But let's hope that it doesn't get too, too bad, right? Too bad as yesterday. Okay, well. Oh my God, I had two cats crying here. <laughs> well, today we are going to be talking about grammar. This is, oh, I had to change. It's not ninth today, it's 10th. Uh, we're talking about grammar, grammar part, talking about subject verb agreement. That's that's the topic we are going to be talking about today. I'm going to start sharing. Oh, but before, before, before we share, hey, a ver, stop. Well, let's check the attendance. Un día ya, ya se nos olvidó. <laughs> let's see. Teacher, voy a estar como oyente. ¿Quién, quién, quién? Víctor Argueta. Victor Manuel Argueta. Okay, Victor. I know my computer. After yesterday's rain, it has become totally, totally crazy. It's very, very slow. Hoy pienso yo más rápido que ella. Well, now that we were happy that, okay, we are beginning on Monday, so the collection of the grace will be on Saturdays. Oh, no, not anymore. Everything changes. And the collection of grace will be Monday, right? That means that uh, the following grace that we will be collecting will be collected on Monday, no Saturday anymore, right? 
remember as we were working uh, because we uh, Friday was our day number five of the unit not anymore okay not anymore now we go for Monday for the collection of grace okay let's see Adriana Sofia present, present teacher okay Voy a estar un rato solo de viento porque estoy terminando una presentación. Ok. Thank you. Ana, Ana Alicia. Ana, Ana. Ana. Por se, ahí cayó, está. se cayó, se, Ana. Se cayó, Ana. Sí. Si allí estaba. Perdió. Se Creo no... que la tormenta. Sí. Sí, 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 porque no, ya no está. Buenas noches. Hello. Vamos a ver. Ok. Mauricio, Mauricio es Mauricio Muñoz, es Edwin. ¿Verdad? Mauricio Muñoz es Edwin, right? Sí. Ok. Bueno, bueno. Present teacher. <ríe> ya vio que la andaba buscando por aquí, que qué le había. Todo esto, pero ya regresé. Ok, perfecto. Ana, Ana Grisel. Ana Grisel, no here. David Alexander. Present teacher. Diego, no, sí, ¿verdad? Diego Batres. Edwin Mauricio. Edwin. Present teacher. Ed. Ok. Elda Cristina. Present teacher. Elmer Fabricio. Elmer Fabricio. No. Grace Michelle. Present teacher. Thank you, Grace. Yvonne Marcela. Yvonne Yvonne. No. Present. Okay. <clears throat> Jennifer Elizabeth. Present teacher. Jessica Lisset. Jessica. No. José Alberto. José Alberto. No here. Karen Janet. Karen Karen. Carla Lorena. Present teacher. Dice Dayanara. Dice Dayanara. Nubia Zulema. Present teacher. Rebeca Marcela. Present teacher. Rosa Hilda. Víctor Manuel. Víctor. Present teacher. Karen, 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 Karen Stephanie, Karen Stephanie, Adriana Marcela, present teacher, José Alfredo, present teacher, ok, alguien que se haya unido después de que lo llamé, Nobody? Nobody. Bye. Jennifer, no sé si está aquí en clase o solo está conectada. Jennifer. Jennifer. Hola, teacher, aquí estoy. Que no me contesta la tienda, usted. Sí, le dije present. Mm -mm. 
O no, si uno quizás no me escuchó, pero sí le dije present. Vamos a ver, Jennifer. No, a ah, medio lo oí. Jessica no, ¿verdad? Jessica no está. ¿Quién más? Vamos a ver. Yo creo que sí, todos, todos, todos están marcados. Very good. Well, how was your day? We gave you vacation yesterday, forzado. You know what time I went to sleep yesterday? At nine. At nine, I went directly to bed and I woke up until this morning. Creo que ni me moví. <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep totally, 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 very early. As there was no electricity, everything was dark. It was very easy to sleep. Well, I hope you slept early too. Yeah? No. Why? Why not? Because I approach, uh, no, aproveche. You took advantage. I took advantage to make the lunch for today. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me to do the homework of the next day. Ah. <laughs> no, verdad. Okay. No, especially that today it is a new topic. This is a new topic for you. Vamos a ver, sharing, sharing, sharing. Well, um, let's see. A ver, computer, comportate. Okay, let's share your screen. Um, remember yesterday? Well, today this is the, the this is the the topic, right? Subject verb agreement. Y mi cámara está abierta, sí. Okay. Uh, we have a verb agreement with complex subjects. Yes. Sometimes uh, we have normal subjects and we're familiarized with them. But in some other cases, we have complex subjects. That means it's not just one, that we have more than one. So we are going to be studying today a couple of rules for that. So we're going to dedicate all the class to that topic, okay? We will study a couple of rules and we will see how we, uh, we have to be ready to share, uh, to see the verb that you have to use. And depending, of course, of the subject, depending on the subject, right, that you have. Okay, that before, before we go there, I want to know what you remember. Remember uh, yesterday we were talking about product testing and we were saying that when we pro uh, test a product that is something like really necessary before launching the product to the market so we can have a no probability, right? So we avoid the probability of problems when the people start using the product. That's why it is very necessary to test. I'm going to send you to the rooms because I want you to share with your partners in your own words. In your own words, see? What you remember about this uh, reasons, right? We were mentioning four reasons. One that gives insight into system level functions. Two, find out what your product can endure. Three, catch product defects early on. And number four, quality assurance. So what I want right now is that you, as a, as a group, right? Because I'm going to send you in groups. You, as a group, Discuss with your partners what you remember about each of those reasons for testing the product. 
Vamos a ver. Ok, creo que voy a hacer solamente mmm, tres grupitos. Ok. Adriana, Adriana, David, Grace, and Carla. Yvonne, Jennifer, José Alfredo, and Victor. Nubia, Rebeca. ¿Quién más me dijo, teacher, voy a estar oyendo ahorita? Adriana, no, no fue Adriana Sofía. ¿Quién fue? Me acuerdo. Adriana Sofía. Pues. Sí, ¿cómo no yo? Adriana Sofía. Ah, vaya, vaya. Sí, sí. Va, ahí están. Bueno, vámonos pues. Discuss with your partners and remember in your own words, tell each other what eh, each of the reasons consist of and then you come back to chair. There you go. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Aquí, con lluvia, pero bien. Igual, por aquí. Teacher, can you repeat what are we going to do, please? Okay, what are you going to do? Uh -huh. who, can who can tell Adriana? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, you, you spell. Ah. Uh -uh. What, what are you going to do, David? I don't know. <laughs> come on. Come on, come on. Buy a check. What you have to do is think, well, remember, right? Uh, remember uh, what we were talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. So for that, you will tell your partner what you remember about each of the reasons, the reasons that we were mentioning for a, testing a product. So when you test a product, there is a reason for doing that. It's not like, okay, I'm going to test it because mm, I want to. No, there is a reason, right? Why do you test products? And uh, there, I gave you yesterday, I gave you some reasons for you to test a product. That's why I'm sending you right now to check what you remember, right? To refresh, telling your partners which are the reasons for a testing a product. Is it necessary? Or you say, I don't know why, but it's not necessary. Is it necessary to test a product? Yes or no? Why do people test products? Do you think it is necessary or no? The teacher is a thing, the example, for everyone the, the reasons. For everyone? For everyone the reasons? Uh, did they give inside the into system level function? One, one uh, example. Uh-huh, you give me- Quality a... assurance, what example? Uh-huh, exactly. What do they okay. consist of, right? What can you tell me about each of those uh, reasons that they mentioned there? Okay, Adriana, clear? Yes, I think so. I, I need to remember what was the class, the last class that we have, because I have some, I may, uh, The class of Monday, no? For, uh, me, 
Short memory, Adriana. ¿Qué exactly. Short memory. Teacher, it's true. I have a bad short memory. You have to exercise memory. I know. I know. I can remember mm -hmm. uh, something that you say, no, I don't know, maybe last week, but uh -huh. uh, my short memory is a little bad. Really, <laughs> really. Okay. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Alzheimer, yes, Alzheimer. Yes. I know. Ojalá que no. <laughs> Pero sí, es un poquito más claro lo que tenemos. No, no, que but it's important to exercise your memory. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bueno, ah, ya está. Uh -huh. Para ayudar a tu short memory, como dices tú. <laughs> Thank you. Chocolate, ¿verdad? Chocolate can help you. Ah, oh, sí. Yeah. A esta hora. <laughs> Chocolate. Peanut. Peanut. A sandwich of peanut butter. Cabal, qué rico. <ríe> Vaya. Ah, pues sí, yo creo que sí ya. Gracias, teacher. Ok. ¿Verdad que con el sandwich de peanut butter que le dimos ya se acortó? Sí, me acordé. <ríe> uh, vale. Entonces, yo, I remember that I was uh, talking about the number three and four, about uh, catch product early, uh -huh. mm, yes. No, but it was, uh, I remember that, that we have another point. Or you no? were talking about the values, but right now you're going to talk only about the, the reasons. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, ok, bye. Ah, pues empecemos. Just the reasons, para no meterlos en tanto lío. Ok, te chuviste. Ah, pues en el primero si quiere ir. ¿Los leemos o qué opinas? Sí, sí, sí. Para refrescar la memoria. Y... <ríe> Dele este primero. Ay, esa es trampa. Ay, de... Ok. I agree you... with David. Ay, okay. David. <ríe> Use insight into system level functions. And while testing the functionality of your product on its own is a beneficial, it is also wise to test your product in the type of system it will be functioning. Your product is only as good as the sum of all parts working together. To test how your product should function with others, you should first determine what the goal of the system is and if your product is working to meet this goal. It is, it is important to ensure that the tested product does not in, inhibit any moving parts in the system and all parts will be able to work together in harmony. Okay, number two, find out what your product can endure. Endures, it's okay. Endure. Mm -hmm. Endure. Okay. Stress. Oh, bueno. Sí, se escucha un, un poco cortado. Okay. I'm going to read okay. number four. Number four. We How were um, reading. Okay. Uh, how can you maxima maximize the result of your product testing. Identify your target market and consider what they want in a product. Determine their expectation and test your product if, if it meets their requirement. Identify what you want to test about your product. Focus on the essential functions when doing so. Consider the native environment and your customers. 
if your product temp temperature sensitive con sensitive, consider the climate of your target market. Seller select a group of random people who will test your product. Make sure you don't have ties with anyone from your company. Make them feel relaxed during the testing and encourage. Encourage them to give real-time comments during the process. Use reliable tools for accurate results. That's all. Teacher, um, yeah. what reliable tools means? Reliable. Reliable tools means. How do you spell it? R E L A B L E. Reliable. Uh huh. Reliable tools are tools that you can uh, trust. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm tools that, that you can trust because there are tools that give uh, errors, right? And that you cannot trust them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is a example for, for that tools in, in case of product mm -hmm. like um, electronic tools? Yeah, now there are, there are many electronic tools that you can use. And it depends on the type of test that you want to pass, right? Or on the type of product that you want to test. Okay. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the Note, Note 7 of uh -huh. Samsung. Okay. Uh, the battery, the... Mm. Parece que... It seems... It uh -huh. seems, like, it seems it's... like they don't... Uh, test a lot because the battery explodes. Uh, yeah, it continues uh -huh. exploding. My goodness! Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. Yes. Jen. So the testing that they are doing is not the right one, right? Mm -hmm. Probably they haven't gone to what we were talking about yesterday. That uh, testing the product in in a very extreme way. So you mm -hmm. can see uh, the product in the same condition that it will be used. Or probably the product comes or is created. Remember, we were also talking about the, the weather conditions, right? Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. the product is created or was created in a place that is cold. But yes. when it is exposed to the temperature that we have in our in our countries, that is very hot. That's why it, the phone gets hot and at the end it explodes. Could be. Yes. Could be. So that would be one, one thing. So they should go in, to, well, put the calefaction, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and enter to the room and test the product there. So, because the product has to be tested in the weather conditions that it is expected to be used. Yes, mm -hmm. because I have I have a experience about about that. I'm going to try to to tell you about it. Uh, we we sell four leaves, and and we work in a competition for a sale or brand and the, the other company win because they four lifts are a, from Europe. Oh. And when the four lifts uh, come to the, to the El Salvador, the, the weather was so hot and the oil in, in the machines, uh, it didn't work. Oh my God. Three years after, they are asking for us, uh, asking for help because the, 
the machines are super good, but not for El Salvador. Uh -huh, uh -huh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, the, the weather condition. And so they have to test the product in the weather condition that it is going to be used. Because mm -hmm. no, imagine it can be, as you say, it can be very good, mm -hmm. but not for our weather, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it was probably created for a cold weather. Yes. But here in our weather, it, that's why it gets really, really hot. Mm -hmm. Imagine, <laughs> that's terrible, terrible. Well, I guess you're about to finish, right? I'm going to yes. I'm going to take you out now. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ok, ok, vamos a ver. How many are missing? Oh, still some. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rosaila. Basha, ready? Now we are all, hmm. we're only 16. Ah, yeah, but everybody's here. Okay, well, I'm going to share. I'm going to share the <laughs> Teacher. Watch. Okay, well, we were refreshing. Who can tell me quickly what is the first reason? Gives insight into system level functions. What does it mean? Who can tell me? Teacher, for example, is that if we have one product, this product has many parts. So we have to uh, be sure that a, each part of the product is working good to, to find, to get the objective that objective para el que, for what the product it make it, was made. It. Made, was made. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, what about the number two? Find out what your product can endure. Volunteer, volunteer. Find out what your product can endure. What does it mean? Only one. Guang, guang. Guang, guang. You say guang, guang, guang. <laughs> volunteer, no volunteer. Volunteer, no, okay. What about the number three? Catch product defects early on. Who wants to tell me about that one? Nobody. Quality assurance, okay. Well, let's continue then. If you don't want to talk, that's okay. Well, today, as I told you, uh, we are going to talk about subject verb agreement, right? Verb agreement with complex 
subject. I want you to look at the chart. Subjects are preceded by expressions of quantity and are called complex subjects. They take either a singular or a plural verb, depending on the number. So you have some singular or plural of quantifier, for example, the first of the decisions has been made to go ahead with the plan. The first of the decisions. See, if I say the first, it is singular. So I'm going to use a singular verb. Yes. So it says the first refers to one. I'm not talking about all. I don't have more than one first, right? The first is one. It's like when you say my favorite is one. The best is one. Yes. I cannot have the best are. No, the best is. ¿Cuál es el mejor? One. Right? So here, the first refers to one of the decisions. So the verb must be in the singular form. So that's why the verb has to be has. So you say the first connecting to class today was who? David. Who was the first connecting to the class today? Mm -hmm. But you say the first connecting to the class today was, was. I cannot say where because I'm talking about the first one and the first is one. Another case um, that I have, remember, we're talking about complex subjects. One of the good things I like about working with you all is the effort you make to do the job right. One of the good things. If I say one of the good things, I'm talking about how many things? One. one, exactly, one. Here, one is a single of various good things. So the verb has to be singular. If you remember, if you remember, I want to take you to the conversation uh, we, were, we were reading yesterday. Remember in the conversation we say, one of the good things I like about working with you all is See, that is, if I say one, I'm talking about one. If I say some, I'm talking about many. So I'm talking about plural. And I'm going to take you there uh, for you to go see the conversation. So you refresh uh, these things that I'm telling you now. I think. One, right? One of the good things I like about working with you is, so I like only one thing about working with you. Oh, probably I like, I like more things about working with you, but one of the things I like, one. See, one of the things I like about working with you is, if you want to use plural, you can say some of the things I like, some of the good things I like about working with you are, see, some. That, if I say one, I'm talking about one. So that's singular. Um, if you see here, the efforts these tasks require are how many records? How many efforts? Maybe two, three, four, or more, right? But efforts is plural. So my subject has to be plural. Mm -hmm. More than one. More than one, exactly. Look at this other case. 
some difficult decisions refer. So if I have some, that means that my subject is plural, then I have to use the verb in plural. Something uh, very important here is this. Uh, remember, when the verb has S, it's not in plural. It's not in plural, it's in singular. Because if you remember, we add S to the verb in the third person singular, right? But if you're talking about the third person plural or the first or the second person plural, we do not add S to the verb, yeah? So you have to be very careful there. Third person singular is he, she, it, ¿verdad? We use or we add S to the verb. So if the verb, if I'm using the verb to be, my verb will be is. But if I'm using another verb, I have to add S to the verb. If my subject is plural, is singular, sorry. But if my subject is plural, I do not add S, okay? Now, look at this. One of the most important factors, again, one. If I use one, that means, it's singular, right? It's only one. So one of the most important factors in this job is one of the most important factors in this job is now going back. So we said depending on the number, singular or plural of k, of the quantifier. So we're talking about here, we're talking about the quantifier, yes? Subjects that are preceded by expressions of quantity are called complex subjects. ¿Cómo se llaman? Complex subjects. ¿Por qué se llaman complex subjects? Because you have to identify if they are talking about uh, one thing or, or more than one. Mm -hmm. And a complex subject is very long, right? It's very long. It's not just one word. It's not like saying Maria. No, it's the first of the decisions, the first of the decisions or the first decision, but it's long. One of the good things I like about working with you all, todo ese es el subject. So it's very long, right? So if I only say one of the good things, the case. So what are we talking about? But if you tell me the whole thing, one of the good things I like about working with you all is, yeah? So this is a complex subject because it's a long subject, right? It's not just one word. Now look at this. Some difficult decisions to make in relation to fancy material. Again, so we have some. Some is used for plural or uncountable nouns, right? But here, when we are using a, a plural uh, verb, we're talking about some, but with countable plural. See? So my subject here, depending on the number, my number sum means it is plural. Yes? Here, some refers to more than one difficult decision, not just one, maybe two, three, four or more, right? That's why the verb we use is plural. And then, but we have this, a majority and a number, aunque aquí lleve a, este es plural. So I say a majority and a number take a plural verb when they are used with plural noun. A majority and 
a number. So you say a majority of product developers prefer to the to use blind tests. Una mayoría. Sí? Una mayoría. So a majority of product developers, it takes me to plural. Una mayoría de qué? De desarrolladores de product. Desarrolladores, right? Es más fácil decir developers que desarrolladores. Ah, okay, so a majority of product developers prefer to use blind tests. ¿Sí? So remember, every time you see this word, se teacher, pero lleva a, si no importa, pero a majority or a number are plural. Always. Yes? They will always be plural. Okay? Any question there? No, teacher, thank you. Okay, perfect. Now, we have uh, some exercises to do. So what you're going, I'm going to send you in pairs for you to work with these exercises. Later on, we will check it and we will be uh, we will see some other examples of how you have to watch that the subject and the verb agree right but vamos a ver i'm going to stop here if you have any questions no questions hmm? estamos no, bien sir. yes thank you okay but was Let's go to the groups. I'm going to make other groups. ¿Cuántos somos? Oh, I guess I can make one more group. Vamos a ver. Yeah. Okay, perfect. There we go. Try to join. Try to join, try to join. Carla, Rosailda, Rosailda, dos veces. Vamos a ver, Rosy, ¿dónde está? Room four. Grace, Grace, do you have any problems, Grace? Mm -hmm. Teacher, can you please give us a, a refresh because we don't have with us. We don't have clear eh, everything. Vale, lo voy a sacar entonces. Y porque me dijeron que no tenían preguntas allá, pues en el grupo. <risa> ah. A ver, sorry que los puse, que los saqué, pero llego al primer grupo y me dicen que no entienden lo que están haciendo. Entonces no tiene chiste que los deje allá si no saben qué es lo que van a hacer. Va, ¿De qué se trata este asunto? Vamos a ver. ¿Qué es un complex subject? Un, un subject, long, long subject. Am. Long subject. Okay. It's a long subject, right? Aha. Uh -huh. 
And remember that we are saying that they have to agree with the in number. If I have a, if for example, I have one in my subject, I have to use singular, right? But if I have some in my subject, some blah, 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 because it's long, my verb has to be plural. Y lo que les decía, un plural verb no es un verbo que lleva ese. Ese no es plural. Porque a los que le ponemos ese nosotros es a los nouns, no a los verbos, ¿verdad? Sí. ¿Mm? ¿Correcto? It's correct, teacher. Yes, teacher. Va. So, what you have to watch there as you're working is that your subject is singular. If the subject is singular, we will be able to know what is the verb. But if the subject is plural, we have to, uh, well, first thing is, Identify the subject. After you have you have identified the subjects, you will know perfectly what is the form that you need to use, right? Of the verb. Talking about the verb, is my subject singular or plural? Then I say, okay, my subject is singular. Mm -hmm. If my subject is singular, that means that I have to use what type of verb? Uh -huh. If my subject is singular, my verb will be singular. Uh -huh. With S. ¿Y cuál es el verbo en singular? Is. Ajá. Uh -huh. El verbo to be S. La forma es el is. Y for plural, plural is are. Ok. Ajá. Uh -huh. Singular. Is plural? Are. Mm -hmm. Plural are. Okay. Va. Pero ¿y qué pasa si yo no voy a ocupar el verbo to be, sino que otro verbo? ¿Qué sucede ahí? implica cuando es tercera persona. Exactly, exactly. Y si, cuando estamos hablando de complex objects, yo, mi complex object lleva ¿qué? Mi complex Cuantita object de... lleva is going preceded by a quantity uh, now. Ajá, exactly. Si mi complex object lleva a ¿Verdad? Si mi complex object lleva A, ¿qué significa A? Uno. Uno. Exactly. A means one. Entonces, si lleva A, eso significa ¿qué? A ver. Singular. Que es singular. Y si lleva a some o si lleva a many, it is singular. ¿Qué sucede si lleva a majority? ¿Qué sucede si lleva a majority? Era plural. Ajá. If it, if it, it plural. If it takes eh, a majority... A majority, give me an example. One example, a majority of people, okay. A number of customers. ¿Cómo completaríamos si yo le digo a number of students? ¿Cómo lo completaríamos? A number of students are asking yeah. for help. A number of students are asking for help. 
a number of okay. mm, of customers, a number of clients, a number of uh, children are a number of children finish the exercise on time. Yes. A number of children finish the exercise on time. A number. A majority of the children finish the exercise on time. A majority. See? Can you give me an example? A majority of okay. A majority of parents their presential classes. <laughs> a boy is sending the children to presential classes. They don't uh -huh. like it, right? <laughs> uh huh. A majority of parents avoid sending the children to presential classes. They prefer virtual classes. Yeah. <laughs> They don't, they don't like presential classes. They say, no, no yet, no yet. Probably in the future, next year, <laughs> but not right now, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions there? Como estamos? Mm -mm. Bye. Fíjense que hablando de, de eso, nos encontramos con algunos nouns, y ya les voy a compartir de nuevo eh, la, la pantalla. Hay algunos nouns que son usados todo el tiempo con un significado eh, singular. Por ejemplo, cuando decimos somebody, everybody, nobody, todos esos son tomados como singular. Esos son... Eh, no, no son eh, quantifiers, ¿verdad? Como los que estamos hablando ahorita, pero son palabras que nos van a ayudar a definir si algo es singular o si es plural. Eh, por si ustedes encuentran de repente allí, somebody has, y so, ¿cómo es que somebody has? Yes, somebody will always, always be singular. Somebody, everybody, nobody. They are singular words. They are not used as plural. So they are singular subjects. Probablemente no sean complex, but they are always, they, they are something that you have to take into account. Check. For example, when you have each, each gets a trophy, each gets. Somebody will pay. Este está en futuro. Ahí no hay problema. But if you say, somebody pays, si estuviera en presente. Esto lo vemos fácilmente si estamos hablando de presente o si estamos usando el verbo to be. Pero si hablamos de futuro o pasado, va a ser así como que puede incluso hasta pasar inadvertido. Right? Pero si hablamos de... Eh, present, you will say somebody pays, right? In future, somebody will pay. Anybody is. Something feels. Hmm. Something feels very wrong here. Everybody enjoys a good book. Nothing has. Nothing has been determined as of yet. Right, they are considered singular. Yeah. Now look at this. If I use both, you know that both is two. So when I use both, I have to use a plural verb. So I say both are qualified for the job. Pedro and Juan, right? Both are qualified for the job. Many went. Aquí, como les digo, en pasado no se ve, ¿verdad? No se ve la diferencia. But you can say many 
go if you're using present. Many people go to the beach and get sunburn on vacation. ¿Qué sucede? Eh, remember, we said a complex subject is a subject that is long and we are talking or we're using quantifiers. Aquí yo tengo quantifier, pero solo estoy usando el muy few, right? But you say few know, but few people know, right? So I'm making it longer. Few people that live in El Salvador know what it really takes to get ahead. So you can make it complex by adding so many other words. Several will always be plural too, right? Several children in public schools prefer to go into presential classes, right? So I can use several. And remember, you can add the rest of the information to make it long and to make it complex. Some, some sugar, it's still kind of simple, right? But if you say some black sugar that are uh, that is produced in uh, yeah. <laughs> you tell me the name of a place is required for taste. Yes. But you know that sugar is uncountable. So as sugar is uncountable, of course, the verb I'm going to use should be singular. Este ya está más larguito. Miren, most of the cookies were eaten. Most of the cookies were eaten. I cannot say most of the cookies was eaten because I'm talking about plural. Most of the students are. ¿Sí? Can we watch the examples, please? The example. Sí. No estoy compartiendo con ustedes. No, po. Ay, no les creo. Qué barbaridad. Bye. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bye, check this. Indefinite pronouns. We're talking here about indefinite pronouns, but these are words that you will always use as singular. See, they use singular. Remember in the previous exercises, we were talking about a or one, see, as singular, but also these words are going to be used as singular. So you say each gets a trophy, each brings the notebook, right? Each, porque el each usually goes together with one, each one, ¿sí? Vaya, somebody, somebody comes, o can somebody come? Si ya le puso el can, porque acuérdese que si usamos un modal, el verbo no va a llevar ese, ¿verdad? Pero si yo digo somebody, uh, works. So if that would be checking. In the case of somebody, can be singular or plural. What do you think? Singular porque es somebody, alguien. Mm -hmm. Check this. They can be singular or plural depending on what nouns they are replacing. Si yo digo somebody, estoy hablando de una persona o varias. Una. De una. One person. Are you sure? Porque en español no existe el alguien es, no vea. Sería algunos. Algunos. Exactly. Ajá. Somebody come. Hey, somebody call me. I have lost my phone. So please somebody call me, right? So after somebody, if I am replacing plural, because I somebody, o sea, alguien de ustedes, de ustedes, then I can use come. But with anybody, I will use singular. Okay? 
So in this case, depending on what you're substituting, if you're substituting singular or plural noun, you can use a singular or plural in the case of somebody. Yes? Via check. Something. Something feels very wrong here. Something feels wrong. Everybody enjoys a good book. Everybody. Es cierto que a la hora de traducir, usted lo va a traducir como todo el mundo, ¿verdad? But I'm going to use here a singular verb. Nothing has. Nobody has. Hey, nobody has come today. So nobody has. I'm going to use singular. And in this case, if I use both, both means two people, right? If I say both, both Maria and Pedro are qualified for the job. Many, remember, uh, we're talking about complex subjects, right? Complex subjects. So you can add something else here and you can say, Many people who live in San Salvador had no electricity yesterday. Yes. Many people who live in, the, in San Salvador are still without electricity. Many is plural. Yes, they are plural. Few is the same. When I'm talking about few, no many, right? Few. Few children know what it really takes to get ahead. Few children know the meaning of money, right? Few children in my country know how difficult it is to earn money. So I can add something else here and I make this a uh, complex noun. Several, the same. Several is always plural. If I say several, several people in my city have a car. That's why there is a lot of traffic, right? Several people in my city are. So several people in my city have. Allí yo no puedo decir has, sino que have. I'm going to use the uh, plural verb. But in the case of sugar, ¿se acuerdan que dijimos some, cuando estábamos en, en, el, en el chart acá, some, in this case, is plural, ¿verdad? But because I'm talking about some difficult decisions. And the word that I'm using here is in plural. I can say some children have a terrible uh, behavior, some children. But if I use some, if I use some with a noun that is uncountable, I'm going to use the verb in singular. Some sugar is required for taste. Some salt is required for taste. Some water is. So I'm going to use is if I use some, but with something here that means is no countable, right? But if I have some with countable thing, like I'm talking about plural, I'm going to use the verb in plural. For example, if I say some cookies are very expensive. See, some cookies, cookies is plural. Some cookies are very expensive. See, but most of the cookies were eaten by Nubia. <gasps> Nubia, you ate my cookies. Most of the cookies were. So I'm going to use were. See? Because cookies are countable. If I were using here an uncountable thing, 
I will say most of the water in San Salvador have has a lot of flow. Yeah, most of the water, la mayoría del agua, but water is singular. So it's uncountable. As water is uncountable, I have to use is or was. I don't know if that is clear for you. Sí, 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 sí. A yes. ver, going, going back to the chart. Pero no tengan pena de preguntar aquí de un solo para todo el mundo. Si tiene duda, pregúntenme. Oye, no se me queden así que hasta que lleguemos a los grupos chiquitos. A ver. What is the first? What is the first? Hoy a ustedes les voy a preguntar yo. Vamos a ver. What is the Singular. first? Ajá. The first. ¿Por qué ocupo has? Con the first. Because it's singular. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is the first. No, the first and the second and the third. Solo el primero, el primero, el primero. O sea, la primera de las decisiones. ¿Cuántas decisiones aquí? Oh, esperen. Que creo que se me encogió el coco. Va. Aquí. Que no me los confunda. ¿Qué decisions tiene ese? ¿Ok? Porque solo estoy hablando de la primera de las decisiones. Solo la primera, no todas las demás. Solo la primera, only. ¿Sí? Así es que es singular. ¿Sí? Si yo dijera las primeras decisiones, ya ni podría decir of the, sino que las primeras, las primeras tres decisions. Pero aquí yo no estoy hablando de las primeras tres, solo de la primera, la primerita, primerita, ¿verdad? The first of the decisions, first means one. That's why I have the verb in singular. Remember that it doesn't matter the tense. Por ejemplo, aquí estamos usando el present perfect, ¿verdad? Ya lo identificaron. Pero como nosotros sabemos, que usamos had para plural, had been, o has been para singular. Ok. One. Si yo digo one, ¿cuántas cosas buenas? Aquí tenemos ese, pero esto no nos puede afectar. Porque yo estoy diciendo una de las cosas buenas. Solo voy a decir una. Y les decía yo. Por ejemplo, cuando uno dice my favorite, se han fijado que a veces le dicen, ah, my favorite movie is the Titanic and the Lake House. Allí ya no puede usar is porque ya me se metió a decir no una, sino que dos, ¿verdad? Pero my favorite es, solo es una, ¿sí? Entonces, lo mismo pasa acá. The first is one. One of the good things, ya la misma palabra lo dice, una, ¿verdad? Esta va a ser siempre tomado como singular. Y les decía, el, el subject, y por eso es que hablamos de complex subjects, porque no lleva un compound subject, sería un subject compuesto por dos palabras, pero un complex subject ya es compuesto por muchas palabras, ¿verdad? Si aquí, si yo dijera one thing, sería compound, solamente one thing, pero estoy diciendo one of the good things I like about working with you all. O sea, todo este es mi sujeto, mi todo este es mi sujeto hasta antes del verbo. ¿Sí? Entonces, si usted ve que el sujeto es bien largo, se tiene que ubicar cuál es el verbo. Y ese verbo, ponerlo de acuerdo al sujeto que usted está ocupando. ¿Ok? Ahora, si decimos some, 
Aquí yo no estoy hablando solo de una decisión, estoy hablando de más. ¿Sí? Entonces, aquí sí le voy a poner atención a la S y a todo el, a todo el panorama, ¿verdad? Some difficult decisions to make in relation to fancy material is plural. Pero si yo dijera, one difficult decision to make in relation to fancy material is. ¿Sí? One difficult decision o one of the difficult decisions, si se fijan, esto, esta palabra que vemos acá, bueno, estas dos palabras, son las que me dicen o me permiten que yo ocupe singular aquí, porque me dice una de las decisiones. No digo una decisiones, ¿verdad? Sino que una de las decisiones. ¿Sí? Pero acá yo no digo algunas de las decisiones, aquí solamente digo algunas decisiones difíciles. So here I'm taking plural. Yes, plural. O sea, lo que ustedes tienen que ver, ponerle atención al subject. Si el subject se está refiriendo a singular o plural, para ver cuál es la forma del verbo que usted tiene que, que ocupar. ¿Sí? Entonces, y recuerden, cuando usamos son, tiene que ponerle atención si... El noun que le sigue es, singul, es plural o si es uncountable. Porque como decíamos con sugar, some sugar is, pero some difficult decisions are. No sé si les queda claro allí. ¿Sí? ¿Sí, sí, sí? No. Yes, teacher. Ok. ¿Solo a Ana le queda claro? Teacher, pero en el caso de que va en esta de one of the most diffi one difficult decision to make in relation to fancy material sería is about y solo sería the cost or the quality, right? No, only porque only... La, des la decisión mm -hmm. la va a tomar sobre el costo y la calidad. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. Ah, ok, ok, ok. Sí. Entonces, eh, sí sería is, sí dice one difficult decision. O one of the difficult, one of the, imagínense que usted dice, así exagerando, ¿verdad? One of the most difficult decisions, pero una, una de las más difíciles. Sí. One of the most difficult decisions is. Entonces, one siempre va a ser singular. Pero si ocupo son, tengo que ver cuál es la forma del noun que sigue a son. Si es un, un plural noun, mi verbo va a estar en plural. Pero si es un uncountable noun, mi verbo va a estar en singular. Porque las cosas no contables, como no se pueden contar, no tienen plural. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ahí es donde tienen que ver eso. Ahora, que no me los confunda a majority, porque aunque A, sea como que A, pero A es uno. Pero como no digo, eh, lo que yo estoy diciendo es una mayoría. Y una mayoría ya son más, ¿verdad? Una mayoría o un número. Un número de niños. O sea, ¿cuántos niños son? Varios, ¿verdad? Una mayoría de personas, ¿cuántas personas son? Uh -huh. Pueden ser cuatro, cinco, seis. So that, that's why if you see a majority of product developers, a majority of children, a number of children. Entonces, el noun que le sigue es plural. Por lo tanto, mi verbo es plural. No sé si estamos bien ahí. 
Yes, yes, no, no. Hola. So, so, teacher. So, so. <laughs> Ajá, so, so. So, so. Ok. Pero acuérdense. Es que en, en, en español nosotros no andamos diciendo una mayoría, ¿verdad? Sino que la mayoría. Y fíjense. En español, la mayoría, ¿con qué? Complétenme una oración que ocupe la mayoría. La, la mayoría, mayoría ya se puso personas. la vacuna. Ok. La mayoría de gente, ¿verdad? El noun que lleva es plural. La mayoría de gente ya se puso las vacunas. ¿Cómo está ese verbo? ¿Está en singular o en plural? Singular. Pero en inglés, ¿no? Porque, vaya, si se fijan, nosotros en inglés, para nosotros, en español, gente es singular. La gente es. Ay, la gente es mala. <risa> la gente es. Pero en inglés, gente no es singular. People is plural. ¿Sí? Entonces, eso puede tender a veces a confundir, pero recuerden, people es el plural de person. Y con los plurales nosotros usamos verbos en plural. ¿Sí? Entonces, people are. A majority of people are. A majority of children are. Entonces, majority siempre va a ser seguido por un noun en plural. Entonces, si un noun en plural me sigue a majority, eso significa que a majority va a usar un verbo en plural. ¿Sí? A number igual, a number of children, a number of people, a number of women, a, no, a big number of women work nowadays. No digo works, ¿verdad? Porque women, o, bueno, a number, es usado en plural. Uh -huh. Siempre, siempre. A majority and a number will be used en plural. Vaya, vámonos a los ejercicios. Después les voy a explicar otras, eh, otras formas de subject verb agreement. Que no Excelente. son de no tan complejos. ¿Qué horas son? Uy, que no son tan complejos, pero que sí este, son bien importantes. Thank you, David que son bien importantes de tomar en cuenta, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. A ver, a ver, a ver. Adriana, Sofía. Adri. Adriana. Adriana. Te escondí. Ana, Alicia. Present teacher. Ana, Grisel. Ana, Grisel. Ana, no está Ana. David. Present teacher. Diego. Edwin Mauricio. Present teacher. Elda Cristina. Present teacher. Elmer Fabricio. Elmer Fabricio. No está. Grace Michelle. Present teacher. Yvonne Marcela. Present. Jennifer Elizabeth. Present. Jessica Lisette. Por allí la vi. Jessica, hello. No here, Jessica Lisette. Jessica. No teacher, present. Ah, ok. Eh, José Alberto. 
José Alberto. No here. Karen Janet. Karen, Karen. Karen. No está Karen Janet. No, ¿verdad? Carla Lorena. Present teacher. Lisette Dayanara. Lisette. Lisette, Lisette. Nubia. Present teacher. Rebeca Marcela. Present teacher. Rosy. Present teacher. Victor Manuel. Present teacher. Karen Stephanie. Karen. Karen, Karen, Karen. No está. Y Adriana Marcela. Present teacher. José Alfredo. José Alfredo. Present teacher. Okay. Vaya, pues vámonos de regreso. Hoy sí tengo hambre. Vamos a ver. Bye. Vámonos. Eh, I'm going to send you to the groups. Ya los tenemos hechos. ¿Quiénes siguen? ¿Quiénes siguen este, trabajando? Eh, Adriana, Sofía. No, ya no, voy a hacer ratito con cuerpo. Okay, perfecto. Y vamos a ver quién era el otro. ¿Quién, este, Edwin, sí, ¿verdad? ¿Sigue trabajando Edwin? No, teacher, ya estoy disponible. Ah, va, perfecto. Vaya, pues. Vaya. Ah, ok, yo sí. Víctor, Víctor estaba trabajando, me dijo, ¿verdad, Víctor? Sí, sí, aún. Todavía sigue trabajando. Bueno, aquí tenemos a Adriana Sofía y Jennifer. Edwin me dijo que ya no, ¿verdad? Así es, estoy ready. Ay, excelente. Vaya, let's go to the groups then. Let's work in the exercises. There it should go. Try to join. Oh, me aparecieron dos nuevos. Let's see. Ivonne, Ivonne. <laughs> try to join, try to join. Mm -hmm. Jessica, Diego, Carla, Lorena. One of the factors inside of the best type of the test is one of the factors. This para mí uno de los mejores factores is no sé qué opina. Uno de los factores. One of the factors. Is. Is. Verdad. Ok. De ahí la otra. A number of customers. A number. Is. Are. Are. Cree. 
a number of customer are mm. are okay a number is singular or plural a number singular singular mm -hmm. entonces es is exactly mm -hmm. ah, mm. a number is singular <laughs> por eso ajá ah no un número no ajá así ah, sí sí, sí. <laughs> are entonces ajá uh -huh. a number is singular or plural plural ajá uh ajá -huh. uh -huh. que no me la engañe la sí. <laughs> vaya ay no the first of the suggestions I want to implement is is ajá of the first ajá uh -huh. la primera mm -hmm. vaya de ahí a majority. <laughs> a majority. How? 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 Well, la... suggest or suggest, 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 suggest. ¿Cómo se pronuncian esos dos? Suggest, suggest. y suggested. Suggested. Suggested, okay. Mm -hmm. The fragrance of the canvas. Entonces es, es la segunda. A number of comments, ¿verdad? No sé qué opinas. Uh -huh. Sound yes. Yes. Ok. Vaya, ahí estamos. Entonces, ahí so, so. <ríe> Qué complicado. Hoy sí le sentí algo complicado <ríe> esto, dicho. Y he tratado de tener la mente así lo más concentrada, porque sí. <ríe> sí, la cosa es que es completamente nuevo para ustedes. Uh -huh. Pero sí, ahí vamos. Sí, porque yo dije, me equivoqué de clase. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, por eso me lo llevé de regreso porque yo dije, no, hombre, sí. Las que me ponen atención siempre. No, me quedó claro, me lo llevé. Pero sí, ahí hay más. Teacher. Pero según lo que yo entendí, si ocupamos some, eh, puede estar relacionado también con many y are. Ajá, es que ahí va a depender. Ajá. Y no. lo mismo, one eh, igual a is. Uh -huh. Va, por ejemplo, si usted dice, some people are. Pero some sugar is. Entonces, si su noun es singular, el que va seguido, va siguiendo son, el verbo va a ser singular. Pero si el noun que usted está ocupando es plural, eso significa, por ejemplo, si usted dice son people, no puede decir son people is. Tiene que decir son people are. ¿Verdad? Some people are, but some water is. <coughs> some children are. Pero some se puede ocupar tanto para singular como plural, ahí dependiendo del, del verbo o del sujeto, es que uno... Dependiendo del noun que le sigue. Ah, ok, del noun. Sí. Uno la, va a terminar la oración en plural o en singular. Ajá, por ejemplo, si usted dice, mm, some water is. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué ocupo is? 
no porque hay... water is uncountable. Exacto, porque water is uncountable. But if I say some people are. are. Uh -huh. <coughs> porque people es plural, ¿verdad? Entonces los plurales, si yo les pongo some people are happy. Some people eh, go to the beach on vacation. Some people go. I cannot say goes, porque people es plural. Y por eso les explicaba en español, usted diría mucha gente va, ¿verdad? Porque para nosotros en español, y por eso es que la palabra people da mucha confusión, porque para nosotros eh, people es, es singular. O sea, en español people es singular, pero en inglés people es plural. No es singular. ¿Sí? Entonces ahí es donde ustedes tienen que, que tener cuidado porque aunque en español people sea singular, en inglés people no es usado como singular, sino que es usado como plural. Uh -huh. Es que ahí es eh, eh, de, eh, de guachar, de guachar. ¿Cuál es la forma eh, o, o qué es lo que estamos queriendo decir? ¿Verdad? Pero si, por ejemplo, yo ocupo people o yo ocupo un noun que esté en plural, mi verbo definitivamente va a ser plural. Uh -huh. Any questions allí? ¿Cómo van? Bien, teacher. Okay. Creo que ya un poquito más clara. Gracias. Sí, ahí va con la, con la mera práctica, ¿verdad? Para irse familiarizando con ello. Eh, vamos a ver otras formas de, de, de subject verb agreement que son más fáciles que estas que son complejas. Estas complex son las que nos complican la vida, pero con complex, porque si sí nos complican la vida. Un poquito. Definitivamente. Batch. La voy a dejar un ratito entonces, para que sigan quebrando. Gracias, la... teacher. Bueno. Thank you, teacher. Ok, you're welcome. Vamos a ir a ver los otros chicos. Eh, en, en esto, lo, lo, con lo que me veo como dificultad, es como con la contradicción o cómo poder expresar literalmente lo que estamos tratando de decir. Porque en realidad es is o es ar. Si lo vamos a la lógica o lo que nos dijo la teacher, tendrían que ser ar. Pero en realidad, no sé. Pero la 3 y la 6 es como el mismo ejemplo. O el mismo tipo de ejercicio. Sí, exactamente. Pero, exactamente. A number of comments es lo mismo. Exactamente. Entonces ahí es como, como me deja en duda. Porque si la 1 dice son of the participants. Estamos hablando de de plural para mí pero ya la tres dice a number of customers entonces si sí está hablando de de plural literalmente en todo pero entonces por qué debe ser is teacher en la tarea pero teacher, sobre la tarea dice David que sí sí o sea yo hice la tarea sí entonces es lo que me pone en duda y ya me confundió más porque en la tarea no me dejaba pasar y lo puse ahí y ahorita lo estaba haciendo y me dejó pasar. Pero según la regla del cuadrito, suba al cuadrito de ahí. Y lo tiene. Yo, 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 espérame aquí. Mire qué dice ahí. Uh -huh. A majority and a number take a plural verb. Uh -huh. 
Vamos a ver, a menos que el noun que estén ocupando allí sea singular. A majority and a number take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun. ¿Qué noun están usando, David? Customers. Customers. En the number three, the... En, la en la oración del, del, del ejercicio. Es sí, el la número tres también. De la segunda parte. Del ejercicio 2.2. Que es literalmente es igual a la que está ahí. Vamos a ver. A number of customers. Are satisfied with the performance. Sí, tendría que ser. Vamos a ver, ellos se basan mucho en la respuesta del, ex, del, del manual. Vamos a ver qué dice el manual. Ah, ah sé sí que lo tengo abierto. Page 18, ¿verdad? Ya le di. Ya es 18. Ajá, pero no. Está bien, está muy bien. No, incluso el manual lo da como a number of customers are. Entonces, en el examen, o oh, ahí no confunde porque no deja pasar el ar y si sí, no deja pasar con el is. Y ahí es donde, en mi caso, sí me confunde porque vemos una cosa en clase y en el examen no lo deja pasar hasta que lo ponga el otro. Ya voy, a, ya voy a hacer la observación. Me voy a meter. Ya voy a hacer la observación. Porque si me dicen es que el manual así dice, les voy a poner la respuesta del manual también. Que está en... en... Mm -hmm. Es la 2.2. Sí, número 3 de la segunda parte. Avanzando. Vamos a que respire la computadora. Está cansada. Ahí está. Uh -huh. <ríe> no quiere avanzar. Vamos a ver. 2.2. La 2.2. 2.2, teacher. Y luego en la segunda parte, abajo en la número 3. Ah. A number of customers. Oh, no me da, no me da el submit. Sí, eso está mala. Porque sí tendría que ser are. a number of customers are satisfied. Y de una sola vez, hecho, podemos revisar la 1 y la 2 porque también están ahí. Y ahí es lo que estamos discutiendo con los compañeros porque, eh, por ejemplo, el número uno dice some of the participants. Para mí era how, oh, para mí era plural. Sí. Y, igual ahí en el, en el examen dice que how, oh, pero quería nada más validar. Sí, how. Y en la número dos, one of the factors. One of the factors to decide on the best type of test. ¿Qué puso usted? Is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is singular. Because when you use one of, solo está hablando de uno. Right? So that's singular. Okay. Entonces, number three is R. Y lo van a corregir. Eh, fíjese que number three es igual que number five. Que el verbo tiene que estar en plural. Porque cuando usted usa a number o a majority, si el, si el noun que está siguiendo es, es plural, su verbo tiene que ser plural. Ya voy a hacer la sugerencia y hoy la observación. Y en number, number six, number six, perdón. Number six. Ah, ah en el ejercicio. Sí, en el ejercicio. Yo seguí ahí en la plata. No, no. Pero comments suggest. Sin S, ¿verdad? Without S. Ajá. Uh -huh. Without S. 
Sí. Ay, cabalos. Cabalos, ejercicios, estos son los que les han puesto en, el, en el, la tarea. Pero, pero no confundió más con a mí. <ríe> Sí, pero ya voy a, ya voy a, ya la voy a señalar ahí. Y, y el uh, ejercicio, teacher, el number four, the first of the suggestion. The first of the suggestions I you want to implement uh -huh. is, uh, is the sign of the, the label. Of the label, sí. La, la viñeta, el diseño uh -huh. de la viñeta. Uh -huh. So, the first. Solo está hablando de la primera. Solo la primera. Okay. Yeah. The first of the suggestions. That's why it has to be singular. Mm -hmm. okay. Ah, pues sí. Ya vamos a ir a hacer esa observación. Oye, David, ¿para qué? Para que no nos confundan más. Tío. Sí, pues sí. Ya suficiente con la dificultad del tema. <laughs> Vamos a ver, you finish, right? Vamos a ver, one more group, and then I call you back. Hi, hi. Finished. Finished. Yes, teacher. Yes. Ah, vaya. Yes. Vámonos, pues. Okay. Let's go. Vamos a ver. How many are here? Almost, almost, almost. We're still missing couple. All the computers want to actualize updating today. Vamos a ver, everybody here. Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Va. Let's check then. Number one, some of the participants in the testing group. Have. Have. have not arrived yet. Por qué have? It's a plural. Because I say some of the participants, right? I have plural. One of the factors to decide on the best type of test is, is the characteristic of product. Uh -huh. is the characteristics of the product. If I use one of, I'm talking about one. So it has to be singular. Number three, a number of customers. Is who are? Are. According to the rules that we have studied, a number of Are. check. ¿Qué dice la regla? Y aquí se nos fue esto. Vamos, por me regreso. Check. A majority and a number take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun. ¿Sí? Si son usados con un plural noun, como el caso de develop, developers, my verb would be plural. ¿Sí? So, a majority and a number take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun. ¿Estamos usando plural noun acá? Ouch. Ok. Are we using a plural noun here? Yes, yes. teacher. Yes. So, I have to use it or are. Are, are, a number of customers are satisfied. 
Aha. R. Because the noun I'm using is plural. Hay un error según me comenta David en, el, en la tarea. Entonces yo voy a señalar ahora para que hagan la corrección. Oye, porque eh, si yo ocupo a number plus the, verb, uh, plus the noun in plural, I have to use R, no is. Vaya. The second, the first of the suggestions I want to implement is or are? Is. 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 Is because I'm talking about the first only. Sí, only the first. Pueden haber muchas, pero yo solo hablo de la primera. Y la primera es una. Right? So the first of the suggestions I want to implement is the design of the letter. Uh, number five, a majority. Testers of testers. Um, yeah, again, remember we said if we use a majority with a noun in plural, what would be my verb? Have. Plural. Uh -huh. It has to be have. Plural. See? A majority of testers have. What about number six? A number of comments. Suggest. Mm -hmm. Suggest. See? A number of comments suggest that the fragrance of the candle is the best characteristic. Any question there? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. By a check. Lo que les decía, ya que tenemos unos cuantos minutos, lo que les decía antes, with singular, oh, with singular or non-count noun or clause, use a single verb, a single, no a singular, <laughs> a singular verb. One third of the article, see, one third of the article, is. ¿Por qué no digo are? Porque solo estoy hablando de un tercio. O sea, la tercera parte. ¿Verdad? One third of the article is taken up with a statistical analysis. Much. Much is no countable. ¿Sí? Remember? Much is no countable. So, much of the book, la mayoría del libro, la mayoría, no, malaya, no la mayoría de los li, de libros, ¿verdad? La mayoría de libros es un libro. Imagínese que usted tiene un libro eh, que está leyendo. And then you say, much of the book is very interesting. O sea, la mayoría de el libro, de ese libro, de uno, no es la mayoría de libros, ¿bien? Sino que solamente es un libro. Por eso es que dice of the book. My noun is singular, ¿verdad? So I use sims. Half of what he writes, half, o sea, la mitad, is. Half of what he writes is undocumented. Y cuando usamos los porcentajes, por ejemplo, 50% of the job is routine. 20% of the people, ¿qué pasaría? Si yo ocupo people. Is plural? Is always. Ajá, exacto. Pero si yo ocupo a singular o no countable noun, voy a usar el verbo en singular. Pero si yo digo el 50%, el 50 de las personas, ya dijimos que en español eh, va a ser singular, ¿verdad? Pero en inglés no. 50% of the people are happy. 
See? 50% of the people are happy. 50% of the job is. See? Si yo dijera, 50% of the jobs. Entonces sí podría usar un verbo en plural. Porque ya no estoy hablando del 50% del trabajo que yo hago, sino que del traba de los trabajos. ¿Sí? 50% of the jobs. Y el 50% de todos los trabajos que existen a routine, no 50% del trabajo que yo hago. ¿Sí? Entonces, este eh, viene siendo parecido a book, que yo estoy hablando de solamente un book. Y aquí estoy hablando de un trabajo, pero el 50% de ese trabajo es rutina. ¿Sí? All the information, check when we use all, Information is no countable, so if I use no countable noun, all the information is. All the children are. Okay? All the children are, pero all the information is. All the schools are. Entonces, si yo ocupo un singular noun aquí, Voy a ocupar el verbo en singular. Ahora, with plural noun, use plural verb. One third of the students have. Y remember here, one third of the article. El article solo es uno. Estoy hablando de un tercio del artículo. Pero si yo tengo un newspaper, por ejemplo, y yo digo, One third of the articles are. ¿Sí? Entonces ya estoy hablando de un tercio de los artículos, no solo de uno. Entonces chequen. Si su noun acá es singular, el verbo va a ser singular. Si el noun está en plural, el verbo va a ser plural. ¿Sí? Y el único que sí cambia, porque en singular yo ocupo much para no contable, ¿verdad? Pero para eh, plural no puedo usar much, tengo que usar many. Then I say many researchers depend, plural verb. ¿Sí? Half of the articles are. Half of what he writes, la mitad de lo que él escribe, o sea, la mitad de lo que él escribe, singular. La mitad de los artículos, plural. ¿Sí? 50% of the computers, plural, have. 50% of the job is. All the studies are. Pero all the information is. All the advice you gave me was good. ¿Sí? But all the recommendations you gave me were good. Porque advice es no contable. De por lo que digo yo, es. ¿Verdad? No sé si les queda. Y les dejo ya. <coughs> Con, con otras cosas, ¿verdad? Que siempre van a dar a, a lo mismo. Uh -huh. Any questions there? No, teacher. Okay. Very good. Y me quedé como con, como con 10 diapositivas allí. Mañana le vamos a, a dar una, una revisadita a otras formas que tenemos para eh, cuando hablamos de Subject Verb Agreement. ¿Verdad? Que este, esta quizá es como la más complicada porque tenemos que ir analizando eh, el quantity, si es contable, si es uncountable, si es singular, si es plural. 
Eh, pero mañana vamos a ver otra de, de otro tipo, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes se vayan eh, familiarizando un poquito más siempre con el eh, subject verb agreement. Any questions? Questions, questions. No. Vamos a ver quién se queda conmigo hoy. Siete, ¿verdad? Elda. Elda Cristina. Ok, teacher. Vamos a ver, Adriana Sofía. Present teacher. Ana Alicia. Present teacher. Ana Grisel. Ana Grisel. No. No, 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 no. No, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, esperen. Eh, David. Presente, teacher. Diego. Por ahí lo vi, no sé si sigue allí. No. Ok. Uh, Edwin Mauricio. Edwin Edwin. Elda Cristina. Present teacher. Elmer Fabricio. Elmer. Grace Michelle. Present teacher. Ivonne Marcela. Present. Jennifer. Present. Lisette. Jessica Lisette. Present. José Alberto, José Alberto, no, Jos, eh, Karen Janet, Carla Lorena, present teacher, dice Dayanara, <coughs> Nubia, 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 Rebeca Marcela, present teacher, Rosa Hilda, Present teacher. Victor. Present teacher. Karen Stephanie. Adriana Marcela. Present teacher. José Alfredo. Present teacher. Ok. Perfect. Bueno, pues. See you tomorrow. Have a nice night. Good night. Good Thank night. you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And the weather is perfect for sleeping. Yes. <laughs> Good night. It's perfect. See you. See you. Bye bye. Take care. Hi, how are you? Fine, teacher. Any questions, Elda? Uh, yes. Mm. All of the nouns that you said in the presentation today, mm -hmm. uh, that are the nouns that we can replace in the in the examples. Vamos a ver, I'm going to share and you tell me. Are you talking about this ones or the previous? Mm -hmm. This ones. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For example, if you say one, one third of these class. Aquí, eh, you can substitute article and you can say class. Mm -hmm. One third of the course. Sí, puede ser, esta palabra puede ser sustituida. Sí. Ok. Mm -hmm. Pero, 
what you have to see is that if this if this uh, noun is singular, voy a usar un singular verb. Mm -hmm. ¿Sí? But okay. if this noun is plural, for example, if you say one third of the students have, mm -hmm. one third of the classes, ya no digo class, sino que clases, ya mi noun está en plural, el verbo va a ser plural. ¿Sí? Entonces, si uh -huh. se fija, estamos usando las mismas palabras. Lo único que uh -huh. cambia es esta. Much para singular o para un uncountable y many uh -huh. para plural. Uh -huh. A plural. Entonces, okay. Por ejemplo, cuando usted dice how much TV do you watch? Uh -huh. Usted está hablando del tiempo que ve tele. Pero mm. si yo le pregunto, how many TVs do you watch? Mm, I watch. O how many TVs do you see? En ese caso ya cambia, ¿verdad? How uh -huh. many do you see? I see three TVs. ¿Sí? Entonces, uh -huh. lo que pasa acá. Much of the book. O sea, la mayoría del libro. Seems relevant to study. Uh -huh. Much of the movie, ¿verdad? Si podemos reemplazar acá. Much of the movie, pero hay movie. Mi noun sigue siendo singular. Entonces, uh -huh. el verbo que yo voy a ocupar es singular. Es singular. Uh -huh. Pero si yo digo many, ya no puedo usar much, ¿verdad? Many researchers depend on grants from industry. Many people, many students, many doctors. Mm. Entonces, esto tendría que ser plural y mi verbo también quedaría en plural. Ok. Then you say half, half of what he writes, la mitad de lo que él escribe es. Pero la mitad de los artículos, la mitad de los libros, half of the books. ¿Ya? Yeah? Half, uh -huh. half of the pencils. Half of the pens I have are big. Uh -huh. Entonces, si mi noun está en plural, igual, el verbo también va a estar en plural. En plural. Okay. Eso es a lo que se le llama subject verb agreement. Porque sujeto uh -huh. en singular lleva un verbo en singular. Sujeto en plural lleva un verbo en plural. Ok. Uh -huh. Y eso siempre seguirían siendo complex subjects. Sí, siempre so, estos son todavía complex subjects. Ah, ok. Sí. Y hay mucho más cuando hablamos de, de, de subjects. Por ejemplo... Estas palabras, majority and minority. ¿Se acuerdan? Uh -huh. En los ejercicios anterior, anteriores decíamos a majority uh -huh. o a number. Pero aquí decimos solo majority. And when majority o minority mean an unspecified number, o sea, no me dan un número en específico. Solo uh -huh. more than 50% o less than 50%. En entonces, en ese caso, usamos el verbo en singular. ¿Sí? Ah, ok. Entonces, decimos, the majority holds no strong views. The majority, o sea, la más del 50%. Uh -huh. A small minority indicates. O sea, una small minority menos del 50%. Indicates. Entonces, en este caso, pero dice, when... They mean, este es el truco acá, an a specified number. number. O sea, no ah, hay okay. un número específico, solo uh -huh. más del 50% menos del 50%. En ese caso el verbo es singular. Pero si sí, they mean a specific percentage, you may use the singular o plural. ¿Sí? Ah, okay. Pero en este caso es específico. Por ejemplo, if you say a 75% majority have o has. Cualquiera de los dos se podría usar. 
Sí. Ah. Por ejemplo, if you say a 75 majority of the people have. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Porque yo estoy usando a specific percentage. Uh -huh. So you can use either singular or plural. A 10% minority is. O a 10% minority of the children are. Uh -huh. Ahí depende, es lo que quiere decir. But uh -huh. when the majority or minority refer to a specified set of persons, use plural, que es como el caso de que le, que le agregué children. Pero uh -huh. a plural. A majority of Canadians have. A majority of students are. are. Mm. A majority of people are. Pero si estoy hablando solamente de un porcentaje en específico, aquí puede ser cualquiera de los dos. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Ah, okay. uh -huh. Ese es a majority, que es lo que hablábamos al principio, ¿verdad? De a majority, a minority, plural. Uh -huh. Sí. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok, no sé si tiene por ahí alguna otra preguntita, Elda. Eh, eh, cuando hablaba del somebody, anybody, something, mm -hmm. esos también son, serían Singular. Eh, complex subjects. No, esos son indefinite. Vamos a ver, aquí están. Los indefinite pronouns. Estos son indefinite pronouns. Para hacerlos... Pero tienen relación... Sí. Eh, o, o, por... uh -huh. Porque, por ejemplo, si usted va a usar somebody, anybody, something, everybody, nothing, el verbo va a ir en singular. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad? Pero si yo ocupo both, many, few, several, most, el verbo va a ir en plural. Y si ocupo uh -huh. some, Va a ir en plural si el noun que lo acompaña está en plural. Si no, va a ir en... Uh -huh. Si lo quiere hacer complex, como allá principalmente en esta parte que estamos hablando de, de quantities, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh, si lo quiere hacer complex, tendría que, que agregarle no solamente la palabra few, sino que few of the students in this class uh -huh. are... Ya ahí sí ya lo hace complex. Ah, ok. ¿Verdad? Most of uh -huh. the cookies that we, cook, that we prepared yesterday were eaten. Yo ya lo hago más largo. ¿Cuáles cookies? Uh -huh. A las que preparamos ayer. Uh -huh. Ok. Entonces ya lo convierte en... En complex. complex. Uh -huh. Ok. Any other questions? Eh, no, solo eso sería. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, see you tomorrow then. Thank you, teacher. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.